Greetings my gooey little viewer, I have a question for you, have you ever beaten State of Decay 2? Because I have not, I normally slap it on the hardest difficulty, ram my car into the local orphanage, then call it a day, but as I woke up and threw a single slice of plastic cheese into the basement to feed my subscribers, I thought to myself, how can I inflict as much mental torture upon myself this week? I know. Spend the next seven days attempting to beat the game on the highest difficulty despite having previously never even gotten close. To make things worse, if all of my survivors die, I must restart. Simple, I thought. <laughs> How I was wrong. First things first, our car had broken down in Magha Valley. Magha? Magha? Next, our three starting characters, Matt, Warburton, and you, you wanna show, you, you, all started with two bags of goodies and down the road from our first house. Securing our base location and supplies marked two important points on my five rules to success in State of Decay 2. Numbers two and three respectively are base and supplies and both of these are needed for rule one of survival. Molotovs. See, to beat the game, we need to clear the map of things called Plague Hunt. Arts, a pile of kidneys and femurs that dictate the flow of zombie traffic around the map. Plague hearts tend to be a bit sleepy eepy until you do too much in their territory to wake them up. Then the amalgamation of spinal cords of feet will dawn a general's cap and start ordering assaults on your base. Because obviously this thing has the intelligence for military tactics, but all of this can be resolved. With Yolos, Molotovs. Now 99% flammable, 1% real juice. To start Molotov production, I needed to secure a food supply. As if my people were starved to death, it's hard to throw anything at your mother over here. And a local gas station to constantly milk obscure liquids into bottles for my nefarious needs. I did this in the video game too. Please don't read into the fact that I'm Australian and my solution to the problem was mass amounts of fuel. In order to aid the great fuel flow, I made friends with nearby neighbours. Trading with the right people could get me bags of fuel which could be cracked open for immediate molotovs. Meaning we could make molotovs before we had the workshop and supplies to make molotovs sanest state of decay 2 moment. With the constant flow of fuel, we also have plenty to pour into a whip, aka, aka rule 4 of my survival tips. The whip. Cars in State of Decay 2 are very important, as they are the strongest weapon in the game, sporting a very fragile front yet indestructible back. If you learn to drive backwards, you gain the most efficient way to deal with zombies, but be careful. Doing this in a sleepy plague heart zone could wake them up from their eepy slumber. When that happens, however, the car can be used by pulling up next to said plague heart and standing on top of it. As as everyone knows, zombies have the capability for genetic mutation, military tactics, and being able to turn 180 degrees mid-leap, but standing one and a half meters off the ground can stump them completely. And this is where the Molotovs come into play. Have enough of them and a sick ride, and the game is done. Or so I thought. Day one was pretty chill, apart from OBS recording eight seconds of my three hour stream. I love technology. <laughs> Day two started off better with the crisp recording and finding a supply drop. Things had started off well until they didn't. Less than 20 seconds into my stream, one of my three characters had died and another had the plague. To make things better, at some point a plague heart had woken up, now sending infected hordes towards my house. You could say there were zombies on my lawn. After this great start, I met the drag racers. A group of survivors camped out in one of the only gun stores on the map. This means the gun store was not lootable, deleting any of the firearms inside. This was bad. 
as a good gat was rule 5 of my 5 rules to survive, but the drag races were a group of car enthusiasts, thus helping them reward, re 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 rewarded us with more fuel. This was a clear sign that our quest for Molotovs was the way forward, so I corrected my 5 rules to survive, until I met Carol the Trader, who could sell the golden scar from Fortnite, which the strange goblin-like creatures in my Twitch chat were all too excited for. Is that the golden scar? Oh my god, dude. Gotta get the scar. Don't say that, dude. Don't say YOLO, you've gotta do the thing, because then I'll do it. So, I changed my five rules to survive again. With the great supply of Molotovs acquired and a powerful weapon to defend ourselves, the first plague heart was locked in our sights. And thus, the great fires began to rise in Magha Valley. The haunting house became eclipsed in embers and ash. The vile playing heart that dared stand in defiance of our survival reared as the cleansing flames lashed against it. Or something like that, I don't know. Pew, 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 pew. With this success, I returned to spread the good news to our allies, the drag racers, who already had more Molotovs to sell to us, clearly showing their loyalty to the cause. As the cool kids say, I lick your feet, you lick mine, and thus the drag racers joined our group, bringing my number of survivors up to five. This was good, as if my group ever reached zero survivors, my run would be over and I would have to start again. But as our groups merged together, so did our problems, and the drag racers let me know of a pesky neighbour who said drag racing was lame. Clearly I couldn't let my boys get disrespected like this, so I went and killed her to death in the epic human vs human combat that State of Decay 2 has to offer. Headshot, headshot. Holy moly. A successful mission, but leaving my territory for so long had left the area open to infection. But this is just as I planned. Leaving my area, I ventured to the opposite side of the valley, to an abandoned church, and now with five survivors in my crew, I had enough to capture this site and call it home, thus leaving behind the hordes that had begun to surround our home. The church offered a watchtower where survivors would defend from, and four slots for the base upgrades. One being a large outdoor plot, perfect for a farm. Next to this, a workshop for Molotov and Golden Scar ammo production, with beds and an infirmary inside. We were set. Is a much cooler statement to end day two on compared to, I have destroyed one of 30 plague hearts by day two. <laughs> I started off the day with a little questing and buying a shotgun, but little did I know the weight that shotgun would have on this story. Day 3 had started off well with good trades, scouting plague hearts and clearing infestations. Absolutely nothing went wrong. Climb up the car bro, climb up the car. What do you mean you can't do it? What do you mean bro? I cured the infection this character had despite my gut instinct of shooting them for their lack of jump game, and then locked in for our daily dose of Molotov and Golden Scar antics against a plague heart, specifically one occupying an automotive workshop. I wonder what treasures it would have inside. I scouted out the heart with no issues and had to thread the needle with underhand throws to hit the target. After this, I got my character back home, is what I'd like to say if I didn't try to hide on the roof and let things quiet down only to have a zombie teleport onto the roof and infect my character. Even with the game's antics, I was able to get my survivor home. Then I shot them in the head. <laughs> Ah, bozo. I returned getting all the loot, plus the Eye of Reach and Megalodon muscle car from my favourite game, Sea of Thieves. With more supplies, I was able to level up my workshop to level 2, now allowing me to make 6 Molotovs with 4 fuel and a handful of bolts. Previously, I had to open up fuel bags for my chance of 1-2 to two Molotovs to drop, or find or buy them in the open world. But now, with my constant fuel supply, things were really about to heat up. And heat up they did, as the next plague heart was in a kitchen. If you can't stand the heat, don't uh, mass 
produce molotovs. Yellow cat's molotovs now 0% sugar, 100% zombie repellent. I had now destroyed three plague hearts, with the possibility of 30 being on the map. I was one tenth way there. <laughs> Yippee! This might seem dire, but the great fuel so <laughs> this might seem dire. Uh, the great fuel engine was fully underway. What's that? A survivor in need? Sorry, love. I'm sure you understand that. <laughs> There's fuel to loot here. Scouting out the next heart that was already awoken from the conflict at its neighbors, I found its location and a window to attack through. From here, I pulled the attention of the horde away with my car, gaining way to the optimal position to peer through the window, similar to what I do to you when you sleep. Easy enough to destroy with the car, but as I check the map, what? was this more hordes on the move vine boom another heart had awoken down the bottom of the map and this was very close to another so combat at one would stir the next this opportunity would need something special something powerful and that brings me to the next rule of my five rules to survive rule seven molotovs Day 4 started off rough, with another play card being awoken via a random event called Curveball. This one made the zombies do more damage and sprint way faster than normal, because of course the zombies weren't fast enough. To make things worse, this heart had no easy window to lob things through. So I recruited the aid of a teammate and a local quest giver to help cover me. Oh, you're kidding. What? Whoa, 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 whoa. I'm almost dead already. I literally can't even see what's happening in here. Holy moly. Defend me, bro. Defend me. He's running off. Stay alive, bro. Oh, no. Easy curveball down. Only took two, almost three people. But a win is a win. And that gets us even closer to clearing the map. But that would be tough if we didn't deal with the awoken plague hearts down the bottom and as i was gearing up for this i used one of my five rules to success water is not real the developers never added any depth to the water in the game it's merely ground with a water texture over the top of it now if you drive on roads you'll have to dodge wrecks and hordes but if you drive in the creek or the lank there's barely any debris in your way in other words Meeting my new neighbours, I enlisted one of them for the sane and safe job, promising their family they'd be back before night. I then grabbed some Molotovs, I know, surprising stuff, and we ventured south on the real highway to the heart that was awoken. This one being inside a warehouse, we needed to get down and dirty. No car trickery here. I ran in, guns blazing and molotovs flying, but a feral immediately threw a wrench in my plans. Low health and infected. A quick cure and escaping to the high ground, the feral meets me here for a duel of fate, but he didn't anticipate my trap card. Gun. With my teammate distracting the hordes, I rush back in. Molotov, Molotov, pipe bomb, just for something different, and the deed was done. My teammate, who totally wasn't being eaten alive, kept the hordes on him, allowing me to escape and hatch a plan. I could return home, heal and rearm like a sane, functioning individual. Or I could attempt to destroy the next hard using supplies from a stranger up the road and what I could muster from the next now destroyed heart. Oh look, my teammate's alive. With damage on the heart from the ordinance I could scrounge up, I lost the horde. Easy peasy, then made my way burr. <laughs> oh no, not so easy peasy. This isn't good. Oh my god, I couldn't get out of the car. That's the last uh. Day 5 started things strong with some payback and completing a bounty for the Trumbull 4x4. An easily climbable car with a good trunk space and it looks sick enough to make all the dudes wet at the car meet. Speaking of wet, this was the day I met the Moonshiners, a local group that everyone in my Twitch chat erupted seeing. Don't do their missions, YOLO. They're the worst, YOLO. <laughs> Please. 
Let me out of the basement, YOLO. Yet, as I spoke to them, they immediately offered me seven Molotovs. Game respects game, I'll tell you that for free. With the trouble 4x4 and the gracious boost from our new favourite ally, the third plague heart in the chain to the south would feel our wrath. I returned to the Moonshiners to let them know of our success. Seeing our good work, they asked for aid with a mission close by. But I noticed another survival was calling for aid by a nearby Plague Heart. Heading to them with a Moonshiner would give me two allies in the fight, an opportunity I could not miss. Completing this mission, I gained Maddie. Little did I know how important this character would be. Another survivor, another heart, another bag of fuel. Things were going well. At this point, I had multiple friendly neighbors, mainly because I'd shoot all the unfriendly ones. With the aid of an ally, I pressed forward to a heart that was active near another group. Again, trying to use as many hands as I could for an advantage. Molotov after Molotov, the game countered with Feral after Feral. This battle was brutal. Even with the aid of gunfire from next door, the horde seemed worse than normal, and after the death of every Feral, another would spawn instantly. This was rough. 11 Molotovs and point blank shotgun shots weren't enough. This heart was greedy and its greed knew no bounds. As it took the member of the Moonshiners, my quest ally and the group next door, but as it finally fell, the instant feral respawn rule was still in play. And thus, my character was plagued far from home with a broken car, and the only play I had was to stash the important loot in the back of the car to avoid losing it upon my character's death. Car, character, and many allies lost, this was a big L. I ended my stream after this haunting defeat, but then I remembered gamers don't end on a loss. I returned to retrieve all the loot, then I began scouting out and attacking the next heart, uh, instead of taking the loot back home. Gosh, I wonder why things keep going wrong for me. <laughs> but seeing a good angle, I knew I could bring the heat to this one too. And this heart went off without a hitch. Much better than the last one. Despite multiple ferals, a juggernaut, and no health from setting myself on fire multiple times, oopsie doopsie, Maddie didn't care because she was sick like that. This heart was done, we were home free and in a position to upgrade our base. A local campsite down the road from the church seemed like a promising position for our group, for our team's size had grown and we needed additional bed space. <laughs> taking this many W's was a taxing affair. And so day five came to a close with a fresh new home and still heaps of plague hearts to go. <laughs> day six, 16 hearts to go and possibly more hidden, yippee. But you can't start the day without a good morning routine. Um. Mine was murdering those who had fled the basement the night before. You might think tunneling to freedom sounds like a good idea, but remember you ended up here once. Who's to say it can't happen again or worse? Now joining us in our new home were, of course, the Moonshiners, as I had acquired them to join the group. This happened on day five, but I'm mentioning it here as one of the Shiners had three boxes of C4. Now I don't dare stray from the path of fire, but I, unlike the goblins that live in my Twitch chat, can put some respect down when I see it, and I put this C4 to good work. Then again, immediately after, two plague hearts and some mischievous runaways right away, we were gaming. In fact, I felt so good about my gamer levels that my gaze then turned to a third heart next door. Okay, I may have made some miscalculations. Some might say that was a tad silly, dare I even say goofy. <laughs> but trust me, chat, when I say I learn from my mistakes. And when I returned with the goat, Maddie, I brought with me some cannon fodder. I, <laughs> I mean allies to block the zombies with their flailing and screaming uh, with their teamwork. Teamwork. <laughs> 
what was I saying? It was about this time that the number of special infected zombies were increasing. This included four ferals sitting at my front door, which I totally loved and appreciated. <laughs> Actually being able to enter my base, I made Maddie the leader of my group. Seeing Maddie was a trader, which would unlock a special base option called a trader outpost, which was absolutely goated, as you could use your radio to force a complete stranger to run through the zombie field wasteland carrying precious supplies directly to your front door. Here you could trade them, use tampons and toilet rolls for literal food, bullets, and of course fuel. And we all know what the fuel would equate to. This is the sort of conversion I want to see in real life. Not time and experience into money, then into X item. I want to call some homeless crackhead to my house and throw cheese at them in exchange for pipe bombs to fight against the anorexic furries that keep eating the people I let out of my basement. <laughs> I wasn't fully sold on State of Decay 2 as a game at first, but I'm starting to understand it now. This newfound level of power was awesome. Speaking of power, one of the unique things about this map was the wind turbine farm, which I had now captured. This would supply power to my base every day, provided I pay either influence, labor, or feet picks. <laughs> Let's just say my base never ran out of power. Having power would unlock high level upgrades to my base. This would include the workshop, which could now make fuel bombs. The better version of Molotovs, aka my 8th rule for survival, fuel bombs. All I needed was fuel. Hopefully there's a handy way to get it delivered right to my home. I ended day 6 with my new ordinance and 10 plague hearts left. 10 that I knew of. <laughs> Day 7, the final day. I fired up my stream and the 6 hours that followed almost put me on a watch list. But first a few fuel bombs into the really bright house, 9 more hearts to go. Plenty of supplies left and a heart next door. Ah oh, no, back up bud. Oh not you dude. Ah, uh, I got one shot off, oh wow. Ah, uh, fine. Due to no fault of my own, Warburton was dead. He was the last of our original three characters. I only cared about the loot that he carried, but if I say this fun fact slowly, with sad music in the background, perhaps you'll be more emotionally invested in the story. <coughs> I ran back, pockets full of fuel bombs ready for the cause and the heart fell as quickly as the last horde showed up. Eight hearts left. 10 fuel bombs and the aid of a crossbow wielding stranger. She's not sure what she wants to do. Oh, maybe. And it quickly became seven left. And number seven would prove to be a killer as it was located in this big red barn. Now there was a window that faced it, but the window would act as a solid object, blocking any throwable item from going through it, even though the window looked open. Me need to get fuel bombs in, we needed to I get aggressive. The as well. There's a horde outside. God, what kind of inhuman reaction time do you have to have just to deal with one of those guys? Oh wow, I literally looked away for a second and I got a feral on me. Oh, I reckon it's so close. Oh no, not me precious car, mate. Yeah, he didn't hit it, he didn't hit it. 12 seconds later. My car's gone. This character was in a predicament, but I was trying to finish this challenge ASASAP. So I felt pretty good about sacrificing them to destroy the Plague Heart, but State of Decay had other plans. Come on! Nah, not enough. I get up with weapons, a repair kit, and a speaker to pull the juggernaut away and pushed in. Bet if I melee it, yeah. I wouldn't be surprised, dude. This can't be real life, dude. This literally can't be real life. D I'm going on a watch list, dude. Don't open your mailbox. Ah, oh, yeah, and then a feral. Six hearts left. But morale was getting low. Amber lamps, 
molotovs, fuel bombs, bullets, five left. Before returning home, I quickly scouted out the fifth, which was in a large warehouse with a window blocked by a fence, making throwing molotovs hard. So I returned home to acquire many bullet, including rounds for the Eye of Reach, one of the most powerful weapons in the game. But unfortunately, I was driving one of the worst vehicles, as the ambulance has a very specific spot you have to stand, and a spiff... Sp and a sp a spiffing direction and a specific direction you have to face to climb on top of it. Something that would immediately haunt me. Ah, that's already done, dude. Oh, he's perfectly on me as I'm like, ah, yeah. YOLO was getting angry. All I wanted to do was climb on a car, something I had been doing for literal days at this point. But the game had other plans. Plans that included a frame-perfect stutter step feral who could change direction mid-jump by 180 degrees. <laughs> but after crying because my video game was tricky, I waddled back, regained the loot, and climbed on the car first try, proving that I, the feral, nor the game itself were the actual problem. It was in fact Bobby's jump game. Good riddance. Four hearts left. Number four went down without a hitch, having an easy window to throw through, but State of Decay saw me having too much success and decided Angry YOLO was its perfect state of being. Oh, you're kidding, dude. No way. Oh, there's there's multiple ferals? Come on, game. Don't do oh. It just doesn't end, man. Cut and run. I can't get in the car. You get stuck in an animation, and then the car takes like five seconds to turn on, and then there's a juggernaut. Right there. Oh, I literally need a break. Sorry, I missed a few things. Suck my nuts. Yeah, I read that. I know you'll be surprised, but I did in fact not escape. But there were three hearts left, and I only had two characters remaining. Now I could take my time and make more allies and play things safe, but this was the last day I had to play this challenge, so to stay true to what I had planned, there was no time to mourn, no time to slow down, only time to attack. Number three was an absolute bloodbath. The halls were littered with the dead. Dead? I had to attack and flee to avoid getting caught in close quarters, but finally using fireworks outside to lure the horde away, I had my chance. Number three was down, and so were my supplies at this point, as I went plague heart to plague heart. But thankfully, I had not been using the shotgun this whole run. So I had a stockpile of shells for the shotgun I found earlier on, and this pile would be needed for plague heart. Number three. Yeah, number three. Um. As the one I had just destroyed was actually number four. I noticed the horde and the map were not withering away, which happens when you destroy the horde's heart. This meant there was another active plague heart nearby. Okay, I have here got not I one can the video on the rust I'm gonna cry. Actually two left. Actually two left. Okay, now there were two left. Both right next to each other. This was it. I had two characters left, and with Maddie as the group leader, I wanted to leave her to last, if that's what it came down to. I grabbed a nearby survivor on the way over to another cursed barn that could not be exploited through the window combat. The fight quickly fell to chaos. The shotgun was great for ammo efficiency, but the reload was slow, deadly in this scenario. I needed room, so I cut and run, reloading when I could. My teammate fought, tooth and paw inside, as I uh, did not do that. Instead, I set off fireworks. <laughs> The sound from them, my teammate, and a rare zombie repellent item gave me a window. And the window was not enough. But I wasn't tapping out. A building nearby, any building nearby. I abandoned one of my outposts and captured the first building that I could, gaining access to my base's inventory. I took anything. Flares, firecrackers, fuel bombs, smokes. It wasn't clean. In truth, it was messy. 
but the sight of that glorious banner was worth it. And as the horde filled the shed, I fled, popping anything, everything I could, and just getting enough of a window to make my car, I quickly escaped, grabbing whatever scraps were left for the one heart that remained. Yeah, look at that. Try and break the glass. Yes, get in there. Cleanse it with fire, dude. The fire bombs. That one's just gone through the wall. Wicked. Yeah. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, I should have known, dude. Okay. Med. Get in position. I should have known, dude. There's some crackhead coming up behind me trying to ruin my, my final moments, dude. Gonna run out, around, and climb. Okay. Almost there. Light this up, dude. Oh my god, I'm paranoid now. I'm gonna see boomers in my in my nightmares. That is it. Get me out of this game, dude. And that was it. I had finally not beaten State of Decay 2 as I did not get the achievement for completing it. And looking at the footage, one of the hearts I had definitely destroyed on the map. Uh, wasn't there anymore, but <laughs> I don't care about the achievement. I care about the story that came from it and hopefully it made a good video If you thought so hit the like button and subscribe to see more where things get way way worse Shout out to my twitch subscribers and youtube members Thank you for supporting the channel and if you want to do the same click the join button down below or come hang out on the streams and join my discord for memes